this is their opportunity uh, for our adopters to share with us kind of what they're learning about what they're doing and how they're using TaxonWorks. Uh, and some of them are early, they've been using TaxonWorks a long time and others are very new. And with that, I think we can get started. Our first presenter, and Matt, unless you want to add something, is Samantha Orellana. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Samantha Orellana. I am a, a PhD a candidate here at ASU, Arizona State University. Um, I am working with this amazing family of weevils called Antributy. So I am very new. Uh, thanks, Matt, for all those like explanations. Uh, it was very interesting. I'm really, really new uh, in TaxonWorks. So I will present you a an illustrated catalog that I am generating with TaxonWorks and Taxon Pages. But for now, it's like really basic. So I am one of the new <laughs> users to introduce you to to this work. So. I am basically um, focused in this in this group, this family and tributy, um, mostly focused on the neotropics. I am from Guatemala. I studied in Panama uh, for my master's and that's where I started working with this family. So it's very, very interesting to me because it's a very diverse group. And uh, well, they are commonly known as the fungus weevils. There are over, 3,000 species, almost 4,000. Uh, 4, and this is a very challenging family because um, it's very diverse. There are a lot of opinions about the classification, but the family needs to be organized urgently. So I'm working on it, at least for the neotropical groups. And there are still many uh, new species and genera to be described. So basically right now, the family is a mess. <laughs> the classification is a complete uh, mess. So it's very important for us to start working on organizing the classification so we can start working on describing um, new species, new genera, new groups that we have all over the world. So with this, I have been working mostly um, in collections. I have been working here at the Arizona um, State University collections since 2019. So basically I focus on identifying the specimens, digitizing, I recreated the, the collection here at ASU. Now we have over 3000 specimens online. Everything is available. I use uh, Simbayora to uh, digitize and everything is also available on GBIF. We have over 400 high resolution images already available. I still have to edit over 1500, maybe more. So all of this material has been condensed in three published catalog. There are more to come. And we have all this information now available online, all the records, all the georeference points, the images, and some of the catalogs already available. But what's really important to me right now, besides having all this information online and making the specimens available, and the standardized records and the images, what I really want to do with this information uh, to move, move forward with my research is to visualize uh, the higher classification and to visualize the known distributions. Because I have a lot of records from my region of study. A lot of those are new records. A lot of those are specimens that I'm still trying to identify. So even if they are already available online, uh, it doesn't mean that they are confirmed records, right? So I wanted something, uh, some platform to help me visualize those already published known distributions to um, help me organize my specimens here and to help me organize my own research. So I also wanted to visualize my preferred system of classification. Uh, this family is very particular because there are many classification systems. Uh, you can choose 
whichever you want. None of them work so far because there are no published uh, phylogenies beyond family level. So right now I am very focused on this classification system that I'm using. And I couldn't find um, any platform that allowed me to visualize this classification and these groups that I am working with. So um, I also wanted to share this information with colleagues around the world. Uh, it's very useful to have something to follow, for example, when you are curating uh, collections and you don't have any catalog that guides you, that can guide you to do this. So I made a first attempt of doing this um, public and available by making my own very simple uh, website on GitHub. Of course, I organized the subfamilies, the tribes, I added the genera, I added maps, I added the images of the specimens that I have been uh, digitizing. I made this website in tw uh, 2022, so a couple of years ago. And this was really helpful. And I was spent, I didn't spend too much time doing this, but it was really helpful for me to have something that I could consult easily and that was organized and that was um, ready for me to check whenever I forgot a name or where it was uh, in a tribe or a subfamily. So this was very helpful uh, at the beginning, but it's also like really uh, annoying to do everything by hand. Um, it takes a lot of time. So I started to um, get to know Taxon Works. I participated in this Weevil Workers meeting in 2023. And uh, Jennifer Hiron presented a project they were starting with antimines. So that caught my attention and I thought, okay, this can be helpful for making something more useful from my, uh, for my group. So I also participated later in Taxon Works Together last year, and I saw the introduction to Taxon Pages. That was really interesting for me because that was exactly what I wanted to do with my information. So I, I participated in this uh, live demonstration uh, made last year, and I was just following the demonstration and I just forked the repository. I made my own version for the uh, taxon pages, but I didn't have any project for antiquity. So I started practicing. Thank you to Nikolai Junakov that allows me to practice with his project at the beginning. So I really loved everything I could do with taxon pages. The thing um, that I love is to upload information, upload images, and be able to share them instantly. I really like that. I'm used to doing that. So if I only had the project in Daxon Works, I couldn't share publicly what I was doing, not, not at, instantly at least. So this was a very, very nice uh, option for me to, to use. So I requested my project a few, days, a few days later, and I met with them and with Matt. And the project went live in a few days. It was really exciting. I was able to start uh, working with my with my family. And I am just a beginner. I just have a few favorite um, a few favorite features so far. I am basically adding names, adding um, sources, adding images, and adding distribution. That's all I'm doing for now. So. I have, uh, for example, the new source uh, into my favorite features. I add the references that I need uh, for my group. I have, uh, thank you, also new text and names. And I have my preferred um, groups also um, on the pin board so I can go to my preferred groups easily to create a new genera, new names, to add the distributions, to add the images that I want. And this goes instantly into the Taxon Pages uh, catalog. So to me, this is fantastic because I can work directly in Taxon Works, but I can also visualize what I am um, adding into my project um, and everyone can see it too. So for example, 
I can see the classification, I can see the references, I can see the map, I can see the images, I can also see some very cool statistics. And this is the catalog, uh, if you want to visit it. Uh, for now, I am focused only in the neotropical groups, but maybe in the future, more curators from other bioregions will join the project so we can complete the groups for all the world. So that's the goal. For now, um, as I was saying, I have neotropical groups. Basically, I am also adding uh, North American groups because um, we have that in the collection. And for me, it's very important to share that information. I also have groups from, from other regions that have been sent to me from other collections. For example, this beautiful specimen from New Zealand, which makes me, um, I'm, I have some questions too, for example, how to better add in certain cities um groups that's one of my questions i just made up a group to add all the genera in there but maybe there is a better solution uh this catalog has also been helpful for this um uh to share supplementary resources in publications for example with this catalog for colombia we had this new record for this species but we didn't have access to the digitized uh, specimen or to high resolution images so our solution was to just link the catalog into the publication. And I added uh, an image of one of the specimens that I had here from uh, Panama. So it's very, it's very useful to uh, share information in publications. And it's also useful to update uh, the maps, for example, as soon as the publication comes out. So Thank you. For the future, I just want to keep working with specimens, finish adding the existing names and distributions, adding more images, and it's, this includes habitus, characters, types, and hopefully integrating more curators from around the world. I need to keep working on Daxon Works. I'm just beginning. And now that I see the key feature, I want to make keys on Daxon Works. So maybe also contribute to Catalog of Life. I have some questions, but I can do them uh, later. Thank you to all uh, the community of Taxon Works, Taxon Pages, and all the curators that have made uh, av uh, specimens available for me. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing now. Thanks very much, Samantha. A wonderful uh, exemplary demonstration of, of a lot of the things that we hoped would be useful to folks like you. So thanks for kicking it off with that talk. And now I think I, I want to say, Samantha, um, now you have to remember to have the courage to tell us what doesn't work, right? Like you were, so at, in, at, moving forward in the future, this was painful. How do I fix this? Uh, so we look forward to your voice in the community coming forward for the good and the bad. Yeah. Absolutely. I have some questions for later. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yay. Next up, we're excited to welcome Paul Brock. Paul Brock from Scientific Social Natural History Museum in London. And I'm going to talk to you about how we moved over our FASMEDA species file data to taxon works and taxon pages. So that's our face page, that's our home page on taxon pages there. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of the FASMEDA species file. Um, as you can see, it's a taxonomic database of the world's FASMIDs, of which there are more than three and a half thousand species. Uh, that's valid species, so there's lots of synonyms, et cetera, in addition to that in the database. We a lot of phasmid enthusiasts are into rearing stick insects, so we cater for those as well. So the citations are not just taxonomy. So it's a very popular site with uh, complete novices as well. So in 2005, um, the species file was set in operation, I think was the one after the orthoptera species file. Um, and we worked entirely on that uh, software until 2023 when the data was frozen by the species file team 
and then we migrated in January to Tax on Works. So I'd like to talk about the key helpers in the Species file. So that's uh, myself, Thies from Keele University, uh, also often is uh, adding papers and so on. Uh, Ed Baker, Natural History Museum, uh, uh, very good on IT, is also assistant editor. And for specialist taxonomic assistance, Judith Marshall, ex orthoptera curator at the Natural History Museum, is extremely helpful. We continue to assist researchers and proves very popular is we have uh, email contact to expertise by geographical regions. Uh, the, these and lots of other helpers, and I, I can't go through all the names because there's too many, have and continue to provide photographs of type specimens, flag up data issues and provide papers. So we've ended up with taxon pages uh, very different looking display to the public than, for instance, when I went to Illinois in 2005 and met people like uh, Rich Flood, who would be a familiar name, and was trained by Maria Marta. Uh, but some stuff um, I obviously met her around that time and no longer involved, and there's now several new ones. So what, what we did was sort out a number of errors in software interpretation of data. There were some duplications and so on. Uh, I've mentioned the major learning curve. Um, it, was quite, it was quite difficult at the time to get used to, uh, but basically um, now keying on, keying on data is very straightforward. It's just a completely different uh, set of software to deal with. Uh, there's also plenty of videos online and a manual to assist. So that's the old species file. You'll see there a continuous list of references. Uh, that compares, that's still available in an archive site at the moment. Uh, so this is what we move to. Uh, on the left hand side, it's tax on pages. And on the, which is a public view, and on the right-hand side, Taxon Works, which we use for editing. Okay, one area I particularly wanted to focus on, well, on the previous page, we did have the header was great news, a lot more modern and easy to use. So that's some of the feedback we've been getting from uh, people associated with the uh, species file. Uh, end users. And these are some of the other comments we've had. Uh, the first one is from a leaf insect specialist um, who we asked to check the um, leaf insect section just to make sure that everything was up to date. So as you can see, he looked, he reviewed the work we've done and basically said everything is fine. So he's useful. Uh, Royce is very useful at providing information for us on leaf insects to make sure that section is up to date. And that's the sort of help that we have. Um, there's another one here. Thanks for making it better and better. Not having any problems with tax on work. So that's a good endorsement there. Um, a minor comment there. Um, and finally, an example of some help there of uh, how we were sent um, an, an update to the species file. Okay, the species file itself, uh, on the public view on taxon pages, an example of an Australian genus, the maps now are quite prominent. Uh, they, they weren't before, so that seems to be pleasing a number of people. And we can get very specific on some of the maps. But before we do that, I'll just show you the the rest of the screen for this particular species. And you can see there's a plus button where you can show all, all those references, um, which again is useful and doesn't clog up a lot of information on that initial screen. Okay. We can go into more detail on some species. 
Um, and this one here is basically um, showing more detail on, on the maps. And we can get very specific with some actual location dots here, assuming we enter in the geographical coordinates. And just to give you an idea of some complications of some of the taxa, we're looking at heteronemia, the genus. And you can see here a number of synonyms for the genus itself. We go down to species called Mexicana and several synonyms. So uh, plenty of work for authors to do yet. Um, there's little lines here on nomenclature, 69 references. There's lines on the right hand side. You can click on that for a, a full breakdown or you can click on the show all. Um, so very easy to use uh, taxon works in general. Now we've got some more community feedback here. Um, so basically Thies uh, from Germany met a number of phasmid specialists at a conference in um, Brussels recently and several people uh, are still not getting to grips with the new phasmid species file screen tax on pages uh, and they're using the archive form and you can see why there so it's perhaps an area we can look at at some stage um, and some researchers may not actually want to add data. So, you know, we're getting the impression that they don't necessarily want to be on taxon works or think it's appropriate to them. Um, Two minutes. Okay, thank you. And in terms of recent work requests, well, I, I would say that it would be useful to get contributions from some um, some individuals. To give you an example, um, and I'm looking forward to um, a talk a bit later on, a session on growing taxonomic communities, moving away from one person does it all. Um, because for instance, I, one of the things I've always wanted to do is get information, um, get photographs on type specimens from China. And at one stage I had a grant from the Orthoptera Speeches file to do that. And ended up I, I ended up going to Taiwan to get the information I needed but China wouldn't allow me in well I'll rephrase that uh, the main museum wanted to do things themselves so I couldn't get access to the main museum meaning it wasn't worth visiting China as a whole so if there's anyone out there who can provide some information on that that that's the type of area that would be extremely useful to us um, but you'll see here some of the things, and I think Matt looked at uh, checklists for entire sites and so on. That's something that we facilitated for somebody. Um, also, there's an online database which managed to find some information which, which helped us with, with the species file. Uh, and I think as my time is up, we're on to the acknowledgement. So uh, I probably will miss out some people here, but. Uh, David Ease is the founder, uh, Matt and various people in the species file group, all the helpers on the species file, not just for our species file, but the regular meetings of the species file team, including going through uh, often technical sessions and, of course, the shared information, which is invaluable. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. That's all right. I hope you could hear all that all right. You were, it was perfect, Paul. Wonderfully done. Thanks for sh thanks for sharing. And I, I want to reiterate that Paul has been amazing to work with in terms of, um, a, you know, going through a very challenging process, migrating from a interface that uh, he would used and the team had used for over 10 years into a new interface, migrating data, migrating semantics. And Paul has really done some some nice things in terms of adopting the new issue tracking that we'll talk about um, with David. I think David uh, Shorthouse's presentation later this uh, week, 
um, and he's really adopted a lot of kind of ways forward. Um, that doing that in the midst of a very mature project, uh, and we're, we're we're very grateful that you did that, Paul. So thanks for presenting here. Thank you. Next up, Brian from Madagascar. Hello, everyone. Greetings, everyone, and thanks, uh, Taxon Work team. It's a super pleasure to have a chance to talk about uh, this uh, experience that the AntWeb community is going through as we are migrating to Taxon Works. And today, I thought I won't go into the nitty gritty details of our trans or migration, but talk more in general about a community, the Ant community, and its needs, and also. Um, how maybe other communities can also learn from what we're doing and how we, you too could migrate your, your goals to um, Taxon Works. So I, I just want to start off that um, maybe in the ant community has been a bit of a pioneer in general through digitization. Um, ant Web, it's been almost 25 years since I started it and we've had some experience and I just want to share some of the steps involved in that traditional approach that we did for the last 25 years and talk more about why I was looking for a new approach and what that vision might be and why I chose to work with TaxonWorks for a platform for the next 25 years. Um, and I also want to talk about this in the context of how biodiversity uh, exploration research um, is changing um, as the global um, transcultural communities are, are beginning to work together and how I think Taxon Works can enable um, more of that type of collaboration. So just to say, I'm going to be the one speaking, but there's a lot of people that have helped at all stages of this. And um, so I'm just a voice from the Ant community that has uh, allowed uh, a lot of this work to happen in, in together. So first off, I love ants. Um, I've always researched ants. And if I forgot to say it, I'm based at the uh, California Academy of Sciences, though at um, in Madagascar doing research on ants. And for me, one of the main objectives was to be able to facilitate research. And that was why I wanted to go online so that anybody anywhere could not only access data, but also participate in data with this idea that if we can incorporate this process of digitization into our workflows, we'll have more people enabled and we'll have the community grow that way. And I wanna show you why we need Taxon Works maybe to make that be a realization. And also, I also just wanna say that I think because ants have been a pioneer, we, can, we, can, we have a demonstration already that as a community goes online, uh, that community can start doing more global level research. And that means those research papers are having a larger impact, whether or not it's on phylogeny, the evolution, the distribution, the trait. Almost every aspect now of ant research can be done at a global level. And it couldn't have happened, I, I think, without that digitization. Um, and so therefore, that's just encouragement, I think, for groups that aren't digitized yet to start the process. And where often does that process start? Now, somebody just mentioned it would be great if it wasn't just one person driving these things, but I think that will never change. And it also means that actually one person can do a lot um, in terms of an impact. And I think we all begin with the fact that we need to, and I think Samantha said, get organized. And we start with names and the literature. And we're lucky in the ant community, we've had from the very beginning these little card catalogs put together by Bill Brown, and then I, uh, of all the literature, and then Bill, um, Bill Bolton with the catalogs. So we began to piece together. But you can see already the infrastructure of using just one person already created feature obstacles for the community to deal with. The fact that we just have a catalog, that's names and maybe taxonomic history, and then a list of literature that's separated. You've already forgotten one of the trilogy of, of data in taxonomy, and that's the type specimens. And those are often just forgotten because there really wasn't any infrastructure to incorporate that third element that actually is the basis for those names. And so that actually encouraged the communities 
to actually not even think much about them. And they kind of pushed them aside because there was no mechanism for that. And I think that's also impacted collections and impacted the value of museums. So there, I think by adopting more unified principles, we can actually then go back and elevate the importance of collection-based research and museums. This is just to show that ANTCAT is just that unison, you know, unification of all the literature on ants and all the names on ants. And it allows us to be have it managed by online communities. And um, we are thankful that that community is there. It's very simple to use. And it's um, driven by the community that it's up to date in instantly after every ant publication. And now we've slowly gone through and are starting the linkage of actually adding the type information from the literature and linking that to the type specimen. And those simple questions like, how many, how many names don't have a type specimen? Where are the, what institutions can we find those missing types? We still don't have a real good mechanism for finding out about that. And this is just an example of the collections, in a sense, that are often forgotten. But by digitizing them, we begin to enhance their value and the value of those collections. So when we also are going to go into a museum and digitize a collection, it's our chance also to digitize the specimens and image not just those types, but species from around the world. And with AntWeb, we um, focused a lot on digitizing interesting specimens from around the world and also imaging every cast and every species of ant in the world. And here's an, uh, an imaging team that left San Francisco to go to Geneva. That museum has the largest collections of ant types um, in the world. And they spent six months there and imaged about 6,000 type specimens uh, for AntWeb many years ago. And we still think of that group right there every day when we visit AntWeb and use their images. But what about this idea um, of incorporating this in an effort such that we can even enhance the ongoing research. And therefore, I just want to take a moment to talk about how I think the research uh, uh, agendas are changing and how our data is changing and how I think we had, why I think we had to change uh, the online platforms, particular AntWeb, and look for a new underlying model for managing that data. So, in the previous talks, you've, you've gotten this idea that we can just capture data and, and share it. And that would be the role of putting something online. And I think that's a great way to start. And that's what we have now, in a sense, with AntWeb and AntCat and those types of databases. But still, if you think about growing the taxonomic community and enhancing and working with the research needs, you'll soon realize that some of the most important elements of a moving field of science is that there always are going to be new sets of data that need to be associated or build off of specimens that could just be sequences while well, we're um, used to that. But you can ask yourself, where are all the vouchers for all the sequence data that's out there? But now we have trait data and we can have you know, sound recordings. We can have all those aspects that have to communicate and be linked back to uh, data that's managed. So Two minutes. It's not just not we don't want just a database of objects. We want a workflow that allows people to communicate and enhance their research agendas. And while looking for a platform to move ant web data, and that's the specimen data, which is the center of everything that should be around it. It's not the names at the center. It's not the literature that's the center. It's actually the objects, the specimen objects. I chose to work with Taxon Works because it allowed the flexibility of a community to actually build and add particular elements that would enhance the ongoing research for that time for that community without losing the underlying core elements of a link between specimens, the literature, the type specimens, of course, and the taxonomic history of those names. So in brief, this is to say that with Taxon Works, We've migrated now our first set of data to Taxon Works. 
and we've already are reaching the benefits of being on tax and works. Um, and I just wanted to, in the last minute or so, mention a few of those and also mention the challenges. Now, if you want to move to tax and works right now, just be aware you're not moving to a platform that's a recipe that's already done. You're moving to a community where you become an active member of developing and enhancing and testing uh, these amazing tools that are being developed every week um, by the tax and work team. So you're offering when you join, uh, you're, you're becoming part of that community. In a sense, it's, you're part of that commitment. And on top of that, um, as soon as you join, um, you'll learn by all the other community members that are actively involved and in getting their data in there. And I think just one, some of the cool things we're getting at now, on AntWeb, for example, if you have your data in Tax and Works, um, you can just right there from the visualization of an AntWeb specimen page, click on something and edit in Tax and Works, and it'll show up live the next day on AntWeb. Um, that's just one of the many, many benefits uh, uh, of working there. I, I think I'll, I'll just keep talking forever unless I stop right now. But I think I just wanted to in, in, end with this note that through Tax and Works, we hope we can build and enhance our communities um, advance to do even more amazing work and research on ants throughout the next 25 years. And I think it's uh, the right platform at the right time for the, uh, the ant community. Thank you. Thanks, Brian, very much for the kind words. And what you're not hearing is a lot of patience from Brian. So we hope you, Brian, can make it to the awards at the, uh, to not to spoil anything, the awards at the end. And we're also extremely grateful for um, sort of taking a leap of faith in a lot of ways. Brian has added um, programmers that have been amazing, uh, young students, Dash Peters in particular. Um, and Dash has made, again, foundational contributions to the open source code base that that helped not only, uh, they, you know, they, they were targeted at Brian's needs, but um, sort of the generic architecture of what we have in TaxonWorks meant that those contributions that Dash added uh, made everybody else's lives better. And that model, I think, is really important if we're going to scale to what Brian needs. Um, we can't build everything fast enough for what he needs as a core team, um, but we've got great examples of people jumping in, writing people into their grants, um, finding students who excel, who can help their project and everybody else at the same time. So thanks, Brian, and thanks for your patience. And uh, if you want to hear more about the painful day to day stuff, uh, join Brian on he's frequently on our Wednesday event meetings where we get into the nitty gritty. Um, Brian, just to say, I think your collecting events were re indexed as of last night. So a side note. So thanks. <laughs> and next talk, probably. Next up, we have Daffy Days. Thank you all. It's always exciting being here in, uh, uh, in Tax and Works. And um, today I'm going to talk for, for many of you. Uh, you know already what I'm doing. I'm working on Ignamoni database, but um, I'm going to show you what I've been doing in this last two years that I've uh, working with Tax and Works. What are the major um, advancements uh, of how to get data into Tax and Works? What we've been able to do and what we've been able to get out of Tax and Works, and sort of the cycle getting in, getting out of Tax and Works, and then getting in again into Tax and Works. I'm going to show you a few things, um, uh, but before doing that, I'm just going to show you why we decided to use Tax and Works, and uh, what was what there was before Tax and Works, uh, before this uh, Word Economy database. So before the uh, Word Economy database, we simply had Taxapad, which was the uh, tool to go for the entire Economy community. If you want to understand and uh, the validity of a name. The biology. Taxapad was therefore the default uh, data set, a database. So it came at the beginning uh, as a normal catalog, paper catalog, but then in 2005 as a CD ROM that you bought. And then uh, 2012, we got another update. You always have to buy this for $200, by the way. And then, of course, we had uh, the last update in 2016 uh, with the USB drive. Uh, it came into this uh, sort of configuration. You plug in, in your USB and you got this sort of uh, 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 layout. You search for the taxa and you got information about the 52,000 uh, valid names, both Iknamani Day and Day, 
uh, more than uh, 16,000 synonyms. There were information about biology, eventually distribution, and of course, taxonomy, nomenclatures, and references. Um, but of course, in 2016, the, the entire project was dismissed. There, there is no update. And therefore, the entire community uh, felt a sort of lost. And right now, we are about at the uh, about 10 years without updating. And what is the problem with it? With What is the major problem with Ignamonids is there are too many names. Uh, in fact, we got 41 subfamilies currently, more than uh, 1,500 genera, more than 25,000 species. With those, you need to add the 1,400 subspecies, and of course, the more than 10,000 synonyms that exist that exist out there. And this is not counting the most recent uh, uh, names. So the the almost 10 years that we lost since the uh, dismissal of uh, taxified. Too many names, but also we have too few people. Uh, I made a calculation last year about there are roughly 20 to 30 researchers working on Nicknomonid, but not all of them are interested in taxonomy. So I would say that the one that are actually working with names and describing new species, uh, understanding the distribution, they're possibly in the tens, so possibly 10, 12. Of all of these, there is an European focus. And for instance, here in the United States and North America entirely, there are only two people working on, actively working with economic, two to three people. And of course, all these people need to manage more than 14,000 references. Again, not counting the new 10 years from now. So we are losing a lot of possibility to understand the new taxa and understand what we know and what we don't know about economic distribution and etc. This is why I try to push for uh, the World Economic Database in TaxonWorks. In these last two years, since we employed TaxonWorks and uh, thanks also to the entire species file group for facilitating us, we've been able to get data within TaxonWorks. The first type of data that I would like to talk about is the people. We think about people as person, but also we need to think about data in a way that it's a collaborative environment. So in fact, at the beginning, there was only this guy here trying to make a big change in the community. After a while, there was these three other folks that believed in the project and they sort of helped me at least emotionally to get through it. And right now I can think uh, we are, I like to think we are sort of global. Every dot that you see is a person or a group of person that is working in a specific institution. These are their names. Um, we got a recent person uh, getting into it, of course, Rachel Bam, which is also my colleague. All these people working one way or another into tax and work, sometimes actively working on it, sometimes simply providing us with some information, images. Some others simply like the project, but don't do the actual work, which is fine. And some others, again, are simply there to support us emotionally, and they are actually actively never logged in into tax and work. But this is what we tried to do in these last two years, and apparently it seems that something is moving. The community seems to appreciate tax and work and, the, uh, and what represents uh, uh, as a database. Uh, but also in terms of data on specimen, we have right now more than 4,000 names uh, within TaxonWorks, two of uh, two thousand of them on Nicknamonid as a valid species, uh, almost two thousand again as invalid, unavailable, etc. All of these are comprehensive of the, the entire synonymic history, spelling, unavailable names, but also the entire taxonomic history, so combination um, and the entire references. And we figured out right away that this was necessary to have the entire taxonomic uh, uh, history. Because, of course, we have too many references, we are losing some data. And while doing so, we discovered that substantially Taxapad uh, lost some data, lost some references. Uh, this is the moment, therefore, to do some changing into it and improve the system. We also have right now completed roughly uh, 10 subfamilies, which is pretty nice. Uh, all of those that you see there are, com are uh, completed. Some others are near completion. And this is thanks to these two guys, you know, the one on the left, but the other one is uh, uh, my good friend, Filippo, that truly believed in the project and has made some great contribution uh, throughout this uh, last year specifically. We also have more than 2,000 uh, uh, 
references, all, almost all of them with PDFs. Some of them are also rare stuff that were not present into uh, Taxapad before in the previous database base, but also that are present maybe in books that have been out of copy and nobody has it. So we are really happy to work with the community to collect the sort of references that can be used, as also Brian said before, for the next maybe 25 years. But also, uh, instead of just simply getting data in, in this last year, I would say, we also get data out of Tanksworks for the WASPs. And one of the biggest data, uh, which is mostly a visualization of these data, is uh, our newly taxon, uh, taxon pages uh, page, which is our public page. We have our uh, new URL, which is wordignomonide.com. Uh, here you can visualize the entire data that we have in, thanks also to um, Jose for helping us with this. You can of course search for the taxon uh, name um, and you have the entire uh, taxonomic history, the distribution, and sometimes when uh, images are available, we are collecting images, by the way, um, uh, there are also the images. But not only Image. that, we decided, yep, uh, oh, well, uh, we decided that since we have a different uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, working progress for the different subfamily, we created also a table uh, that you can go and check and understand which part of the subfamily are completed. And we also have this sort of link for the uh, subfamily that you can click on it. And recently, uh, the Natural History Museum um, and uh, Shaw created this sort of page for each subfamily. So Wordy Kinomani database is not just simply a collection of data right now, but also a collection of information for the general public with collection also of references. So anybody can go here and find a hub for the entire uh, community for information about the different subfamilies. But not only that, uh, uh, TaxonWorks and the World Economic Database now has generated some other projects. One of this is led by uh, uh, Filippo on the checklist of the Italian fauna, which is substantially recording all the species of Economic by region within Italy, of course, by reference. So we know who said it was in that recorded in that region, and of course, how it has been um, uh, recorded into the publication. All this data will flow into TaxonWorks. So substantially, we go from TaxonWorks out of TaxonWorks and again into TaxonWorks. And this is for me extremely exciting. Some challenges, and I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, they, You all possibly know this if you follow me uh, a little bit, is that we have challenges convincing the community about the usefulness of Word Economy Database and TaxonWorks in general. And I've been struggling with this for the last year and a half. Of course, convincing also the community that we need a collaboration. And if you can do that, at least an indirect collaboration, which means simply send us PDFs or make us aware of new publication out there. We haven't reached that. Possibly my colleague, Rachel Ben will fix that. We were thinking about creating a sort of newsletter, uh, Twitter or WhatsApp uh, uh, group that we can at least communicate the news about the community. And of course, convincing also the community uh, that the database are not forever and nothing is forever, but at least this is possibly one of the best way that we have for the next 25 years, as Brian said, to uh, create a community and proceed with the knowledge about this wonderful uh, family. And with this one, I thank everyone, uh, the Species File Group for these two years of facilitation, help and understanding, the entire Kinomani community uh, who believe in it, uh, the curators of the Word Economy database and potential user consumers of, of the Word Economy database. And with this one, thank you so much. Thanks, Davide. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Um, and you can see, and you'll see some chat comments now you can follow up on, and people are uh, definitely now intrigued and perhaps. They'll be motivated to do the same, figuring out a way to share gap information. Matt? I just wanted to add, it's fun to see customizations to the Taxon Pages framework. So what you saw is the ability to, to customize, and we can get into that more, more in depth later on. Thank you all. Yeah, it's been, thanks also to uh, Jose for helping us out with that. 
kind of did a mess at the beginning, but he fixed it <laughs> as always. And, and Davide is referring to Jose Luis Pereira. Uh, yes. He is a developer of the Taxon Works uh, species file group, and he helps us the user interface and workings of that are uh, his expertise. Next up, we are excited to uh, welcome some folks who have joined us from Italy to share their experience using the API, the Application Programming Interface, to pull data out of the Universal Calcidoidia database at, that's at TaxonWorks uh, to look at biological associations and relationships using the data that they can have access to. Um, Enrico, por favore. Grazie. Eh, scusateci se parliamo in italiano. Il nostro inglese non è molto buono. E grazie Davide per la traduzione. Grazie Deborah per averci inserito in questa sessione. Maybe you can just translate as we go. Okay, yeah. So they, um, Enrico simply said thank you and um, he... Uh, uh, say sorry because they don't speak a good English, so they're gonna talk in Italian from now on. So I'm gonna try to translate it uh, and help Enrico out. I think that'll work best because otherwise they'll just see Italian in the captions. So yeah. Enrico, uh, facciamo così, quindi tu parli, io cerco di tradurre, ok? Bene, ok. Grazie. Eh, il nostro progetto non nasce in un istituto di ricerca o università, è un progetto di monitoraggio agroecologico nelle aziende agricole e però dal 2023, grazie a James Woolley, siamo anche nel eh, eh, Universal Cassidy Database in TaxonWorks. Io sono Enrico Gabrielli, geografo e tecnico agrario. Ah, scusami. No, Enrico, va benissimo. Uh, il problema è che non mi ricordo tutto. Sorry, um, I, we have technical <laughs> issues. Simply because I, uh, Enrico is great in presenting, but I, um, I'm not really great in remembering what he's saying. So we need to go slow a little bit. <laughs> so essentially he's saying that uh, his uh, activity is more on the agroforestry uh, uh, side of, of, of the entomology. And in more recent years, he's been uh, integrating uh, uh, all his data within the Universal Calcidoid database and he's using those data to inform his own research. Enrico, prego. Well, <laughs> uh, sì, um, bene, Adriano, presentati tu. Buongiorno, sono Adriano Cazzuoli, biologo, botanico e studioso dei calcidoidei dell'area mediterranea. Uh, Adriano has just presented himself. He's a botanist and works on the fauna and flora of the Mediterranean area in Italy, of course. Grazie, Ho pubblicato due catalogi faunistici ed ho partecipato a corsi organizzati da John Noyes al British Museum. He has published a faunistic catalog, a floristic catalog, and has also participated into the workshop at the Natural History Museum uh, on the Calcidoid uh, with John Noyes. Negli ultimi anni ho collocato sei malaise trap in, in tre diverse aree di un agro foresty farm, un agro foresty farm nel nord d'Italia, raccogliendo più di 2000 esemplari di 466 specie. So he recently placed uh, six malaise trap into um, an agroforestry and uh, farm in, in Italy, in regenerating Villa Fortuna, and he has collected uh, more than 2,000 specimens belonging to uh, more than 465 species. Ho, eviden ho evidenziato così una buona biodiversità, particolarmente abbondanti, gli insirti dei feudati e i coccoidei delle poace e i parassitoidi so he collected a huge amount of biodiversity belonging to uh, quale sottofamiglia Adriano puoi ripetere 
ecco, fammi con quei, con, con... Eh, sì, sì, dei feudati, ecco, coi dei delle poace. Ok, so Sufide, Cocoidi of Poise e i parassiti uova di Ortoptera, centro d'ore e Anastatus. E i parassiti di Ortoptera e X, as well. Mm. Ok, buon pomeriggio, buon proseguimento. Ah, Come si fa ad andare avanti? Ah, ecco. Uh, bene, mm. uh, quindi abbiamo stilato una lista ma abbiamo It's pensato che fosse mm, abbiamo pensato che fosse importante per l'azienda agricola e dare un'idea della diversità delle relazioni biologiche eh, estrarre le associazioni biologiche a partire da questa lista so they thought that Uh, it was important to compile this list not only because of uh, the biodiversity and not only because of the farm but also to extract some uh, biological association from this list that could then uh, be possibly incorporated into the UCD. Per farlo abbiamo usato il nuovo strumento del filter unified tooling eh, PIBO eh, di cui ha parlato, eh, abbiamo parlato anche prima e eh, abbiamo ah. ideato una script in R a partire da una, una, una JSON request. So they, to do that, they were able to use the R script that we talk about, that, that Matt talked about later, uh, before, sorry, uh, using this HTTR2 package and they also been able to uh, use the json request uh, uh, the script to be able to to work with this sort of list and uh, biological association e uh, insieme alla uh, le associazioni biologiche abbiamo uh, eh, estrapolato anche i dati tassonomici sia dei soggetti, perché ci vede, sia degli oggetti, cioè gli ospiti. Uh, so not only they compile this list and the biological association, but they also extrapolated and extracted data uh, on the nomenclature of the subject, so the prasitoids, and of the object which are the, uh, the host, so the one that's been parasitized. E uh, abbiamo uh, pensato nella visualizzazione all'uso di un hierarchical edge bundle in cui il grafico sottostante, underlying graph, uh, fosse la tassonomia <clears throat> con la visualizzazione solo dei nomi. So they decided to, that to visualize this data, they used this sort of a hierarchical edge bundle that you can see there, in which the underlying condition is essentially the nomenclature. So what you see there is the nomenclature. It's a sort of a hierarchical uh, uh, visualization. Hierarchical. E perché abbiamo pensato che le relazioni fossero come dei fili e i fili insieme potessero costituire una sorta di tessuto funzionale. Uh, so they, they thought about this sort of relationship uh, in terms of threads and all these threads they connect together to create this sort of network of threads uh, uh, that are easier to sort of visualize or understand and connecting together. E, e questo è il risultato che ha eh, le differenti proporzioni a seconda della quantità di esemplari e del tipo di relazioni definite in diversi colori e intensità del colore con i fili che si sovrappongono. 
So this sort of visualization that Enrico showed is showing not only uh, the diffusion of this relationship, but also how they are connected, showing the quantity uh, and the type of relationship. And the amount of color is uh, distinguishing these two type of um, um, selections, the two, two type of quantity and types of, of relationship. Yes. Uh, con un, un solo uh, problema che si collega poi con quello che tu hai detto prima, Davide, sull'incompletezza uh, ancora de, uh, dei dati su uh, Universal Cassetto Idea Database, di cui eravamo a conoscenza, ovviamente, perché è un lavoro in progress, però per eh, um, la query Europe, Western Asia, Northern Africa, eh, ancora delle 466 specie identificate, ben 206 non hanno, in queste tre aree, ancora una associazione biologica. So, eh, um, Enrico found... Uh, Enrico found that uh, connecting to what I was saying before with the mnemonic, uh, he's also found that uh, some sort of in, uh, uh, incomplete data, at least for three major areas, Europe, Western Asia, and Northern Africa, uh, which substantially all the 465 species that they were able to identify, 206 of them did not have any kind of biological association. And so they were able to merge this. Uh, ecco, questo è stato un po' una uh, prova nostra per uh, vedere come si può interagire con delle aziende agricole, con uh, anche dei cittadini per far capire la uh, uh, grande eh, co, eh, eh, diversità e eh, complessità delle relazioni biologiche che possiamo monitorare in un'azienda agricola. So sostanzialmente what they did Enrico and Adriano they, they were able uh, not only to, to, to implement the UCD but also to sort of test and try to see uh, what are these interaction for the agroforestry industry and university, but also uh, to connect with the citizen to really understand the uh, 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 sort of diversity and complexity of biological association, in this case, within the Cassidy community. Two minutes. Ah, abbiamo finito. <laughs> eh, Enrico, thanks everyone. And uh, just to, to, to say one thing, uh, Enrico did an amazing presentation. I didn't give justice to it. So sorry. If anything is wrong, it's because of me, not because of Enrico and Adriano. Right. Thank you. And Enrico and Davide, thanks so much for this experiment. We were we were practicing with not just experiment, it was more than that. Uh, we were practicing with automatic translation. And um, we're very grateful that you had the courage to to present in a language that wasn't English. And we'd like this to be uh, uh, a sort of exemplary approach. If you want to present in another language and we can sort of facilitate it uh, in a three minute one slide, for example, coming up um, in a breakout room this afternoon, there will be opportunities for speaking other languages that are not English. Um, please also have the courage to come forward and present and we will continue to work out how to best do this. I also want to thank Enrico for, for um, sticking with and being um, one of the first pioneers to use the API. What you might not have caught is that he's accessing the data not via the uh, interfaces, but by the programmatic interfaces that we provide. Uh, and his R exploration is exactly what we want to see and more of in the future. So thanks for being a pioneer there. Thank you.